Greetings Mech Warriors, this is Stuart Rigos Level 3 and we are going to be showing you how to use Mech HQ uh, for campaign operations. We have made our uh, mercenary unit which is just a lance with a dropship. We are now going to do the whole GM thing of creating a um, mission and a contract and uh, setting up the first mission before then looking at how we do repairs. So if I go to, first of all, we're going to decide where we're starting. If I go to the interstellar map, we're going to decide we're going to start on Tamar. So here's Tamar. And quite simply, all I need to do is right click GM and move to selected planet. Everyone's on Tamar now. So we're going to operate. The GM's decided that we're going to have a campaign, uh, a mission, which is going to be an objective raid to the world, the Draconis world candies now this whole map by the way is mostly canon uh, some of the stuff is randomly generated where it isn't canon if it is canon then it's been inputted here by the great people who design mech hq um, where it isn't canon it's just rolled randomly uh, once so it doesn't keep rolling randomly every time you play uh, but it's all been rolled randomly and if later on they add canon to it then they'll go back and they'll edit uh, the, the the database to add that in so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a mission. So the GM, if you look in campaign ops, the GM can basically roll a mission and all the missions are controlled by the briefing room. So we're going to add a mission. We're going to choose the new contract option and we're going to call this contract objective raids. Let's type that in properly. Objective raids. Our location is going to be to. Um, I forgot what the place we called now. I'm going to have to go back and have a look. Candice, that's it. So let's do that again. Sometimes it doesn't type properly until you actually click with the mouse. Objective raids into candies. The mission type is an objective raid. Our employer, this is just for fluff, is going to be the Lyran Alliance. And then all of these options you can actually get um, from the book, the book basically, uh, Campaign Ops page 4041 gives you all of these different options which you can either roll randomly or you, your GM can choose. Now the uh, Pay uh, Mercenary Re Review Board uh, Council fee isn't part of Campaign Ops but uh, you can leave it on there, it's basically a 5% fee. Contract length you can find from the table your GM will tell you, so for an objective raid it's three months. Just enough time to get there and back. Payment multiplier uh, times two because it's danger. If it's times one for, for garrison duty uh, and times two if it's a high threat mission. Command rights, again, that's all explained in the book. We're gonna say it's independent. We're doing this on our own. Transportation terms, we're gonna say it's we're getting no transportation. We have to pay everything. If it's 100%, then they'll pay for the drop ships and jump ships. Overhead compensation is not in campaign ops. It's part of the um, part of the field manual mercenaries but if you have that you can choose uh, what option to choose in that whether to be fully overhead, uh, overhead compensation salvage rights we're going to say 100% if you see it you can keep it uh, battle compensation none you break it you buy it support is basically paying for ammunition uh, and we're going to say again zero so no support here. We're basically paying for our own um, ammunition. So uh, support would be, you know, paying the the um, peacetime operating costs or the amount of ammunition you have to spend every every month in training. There's a signing bonus option and there's an advance. I like to keep the advance as 25%. So you get 25% of the contract up front. The breakdown's here, so th this contract's worth 18 million. You might think, how is that calculated? There's a formula in campaign ops for how it's calculated. 
and of course we get it's based on five percent of the total value of our mercenary uh, company and one percent of the uh, value of our um, dropship you can also if you create larger forces with lots of non-combat units you can actually set them as non-combat and then that wouldn't affect the uh, contract pay um, it tells you how much the transportation uh, amount you'd get etc lots of different things here and how much you get paid per month so we're going to click OK. Once you click OK, it's set. You have to delete it if it's wrong. You can't go back and edit it. You can go back and write in a, um, some details about the mission if you want, just for a GM point of view. I'm going to click OK. So now the uh, mission is going to start on the um, 15th of the 8th, which is based on how long it takes us to get there. So the 15th of... Um, August and we could have changed that at the beginning to change what the start date is uh, for fluff reasons but you can't change it now unfortunately. Now in a little while we're going to add a scenario but we can't do that yet until we get there so we've got to get to the start date. The scenario is, is the individual gaming session that you're going to have basically and a contract may be just one scenario in this case we're just going to do one objective raid or it could be several scenarios in a row. So we're going to go to the interstellar map and we're going to travel to Candies. So we're on Tamar. You can see that because of the icon there, the yellow icon around. We click on Candies. We can't click a jump path. It's going to take us a total time of 10.75 days. It's quite quick actually. And we're going to begin transit. Now there's this lovely little um, animation for this. You can look on this and you can see here we are around Tamar and we can advance the day and as we advance the day we move along heading to the Zenith jump point. We've arrived, we jump and then we're in Candies and we're now heading towards Candies which is not far actually. Sometimes these jump points are, can, be, can be a long way, it can be like 40 days. Um, doesn't include rules here for pirate jump points though so if you want to do that there is a GM way to override this and transport immediately and then to reset the date so there we go we've arrived and so we've arrived and if I go to the uh, briefing room I can now see the date is the uh, Saturday the 16th of August which is the day after the 15th and so we're now able to add a scenario we're going to add a scenario and we're going to call this Raid the Warehouses. And now this is the point where we end Mega, uh, using uh, Mac HQ and we go and play the game. But to play the game, we need some sheets. So there's a great way you can actually get this to print sheets for you. Now, before we do that, you can use Mac HQ to make a record of loot that becomes available for this but you don't have to you could do this by pen and paper you know is there a cash reward are there units that they could pick up um, for instance um, you know mechs are there parts to be found you don't have to do that okay you can just leave that uh, there but it's it's quite useful and then you can write a little description so there we go we've got our pending um, scenario and now we need to assign a force to the scenario so we go to our TONE click on the file arts right click and go to deploy force objective raid raid warehouse we are now deployed and if I go back to the briefing room click on the mission we now have some new options and there are two options that are really useful one print sheets print sheets sends the sheets directly to your printer uh, not as a PDF though, unfortunately. Um, I don't know why it doesn't allow you to print directly to a PDF. Um, you've also got um, these things which are basically just to do with um, mech, Mega Mech, which we're not using. And you've got export to mold file. Now this is useful because when I click export to mold file, I create uh, this file which I'm going to save in my Mech HQ folder. 
and then if I go to um, Mega Mech, the Mega Mech folder and go to a program called Mega Mech Lab, which will come up on the screen in a minute, and then click on New Mech, doesn't matter what you really click on, but New Mech is easiest, and then go to File and Export to PDF from master unit list or from M MUL file and we're going to scroll here to the MUL file that we're using so um, raid the warehouses for this one and click save I can now go back into my uh, folder and find that file, that uh, PDF I've just saved. And there it is. So now I've exported that. Uh, if you play with Mech, uh, Mega Mech Lab, you can export little tables as well, which, have, uh, which are quite useful, or just export the plane sheets. And so we've now got all of our sheets with our pilot data and their um, catchy names as well on them. So it's a great aid here for actually producing sheets. Uh, personally, I then take the PDF and I export it into OneNote and use my iPad to, uh, to do my record sheets, but you can just print it, do it old fashioned pen and paper. What we're gonna look at though next video is what happens after the mission when everything's gone wrong and we need to do some repairs. So that's gonna be our next video.